Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Saturday, and that would be, uh, let me see here, what would it be? Uh, April 8th, 2023, and today I am sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page, and that is Salcedo Paranormal dot podbean dot com that's s a l s i d o paranormal dot podbean dot com always happy to hear from you all whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences whether they're your own or from others that you trust happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them and if you would like to support the show there are a few ways to do that of course uh, sharing the show with others is always appreciated. Uh, and all these ways are appreciated, of course. And of course, there are the, um, my, basically my, my books on Amazon, uh, Paranormal Nonfiction and Fiction, that you can check out. If you just search for my name, James Salcedo, over on Amazon. And of course, I have other links as well for uh, just donations through uh, PayPal and Venmo. And uh, I need to look into some other, getting some other things set up too. And uh, you can find all those. There's a pin post here in the Discord channel. And of course, I, I include those in the episode descriptions of all the episodes as well. So uh, thank you all for listening, whether you're here live for the show, especially today because I'm starting an hour late. So thank you all for joining me a little bit later than usual. And also, of course, if you listen to the podcast or YouTube streams, their feeds. And uh, I have several stories here to share today. We'll see how many we get through. And uh, I think with that, I can start uh, right about now. Just another update real quick. Uh, things are in the works for me to be on the uh, radio station. That, that's Trouble Minds Radio Network. Uh, KUAP uh, D Digital Broadcasting, and uh, we'll be we're working on that, getting that going as soon as possible. So I'll let you all know when that's up, and that will be another way you can listen to the shows. It'll be um, a mix of current shows plus older shows. So really excited for that, and glad to be part of that whole project. Uh, so the first story here. This one says, I'm in the UK and just saw something I can't explain in the sky. It was a bright, mystical, shining light in the night sky, just hovering in place. I asked a friend if it could be from a local sports stadium, but they pointed out that it's not open and there would be spotlights filling up that part of the sky. If it was. Besides the beautiful nature of the light itself, it also had flares and lines coming out of it as well. I don't know what it is, except that I don't think it's a satellite. Any ideas? And that's where they ask, and that's where that story ends. And uh, the lines and the flares, that's an amazing thing right there. I wonder what that indicates. I don't know enough about um any kind of craft or lights in the sky to know what would naturally do that but sounds like a, cha a changing shifting kind of light which is really amazing uh to think about that just being in the sky not going anywhere just changing shape i guess you could say um so yeah just a neat sighting there of uh i don't know if you'd call that a ufo or a, i almost think it would be more just unidentified aerial or anomalous even just a phenomenon uh in the sky so a neat little story of a sighting there and it sounded like it was happening right as the person right before the person wrote it down so those are always neat stories when it's that fresh on the person's mind anyway obviously there's a delay between when it gets posted and then when people see it but uh, so that's the first story for tonight. I'm always interested in anything that's seen in the sky like that. Uh, this next one 
says, This happened around two months ago. I was sitting on the floor, watching my dogs eat their dinner, as I wanted to make sure the larger one didn't keep the smaller one from eating as well. I have these hanging chairs in my kitchen, and as I watch the dogs, I noticed that one of them had started swinging back and forth. But the chairs are not attached to the ceiling. They have their own metal frames. The arc of the swing grew larger. It wouldn't stop until I went to it and took hold of it, forcing it to stop. I think it's strange that the dogs never reacted to it. I hadn't thought about it or the event being paranormal until recently, but it's a possibility. So that's where that story ends. Another fairly quick one, but sounds like uh, some some kind of manipulation of that that chair. Um, maybe someone wanting to get their attention. Uh, they did mention, the writer mentioned that they were surprised the dogs didn't do anything, but I also wonder if part of that was because they were eating. Not to say that that's all they focus on, but if they were distracted enough, uh, I could see maybe that them not really thinking much of it, or maybe they just didn't feel anything coming from that direction that was threatening, so they just went on with what they were doing. Um, either way, uh, I wonder how much activity, if there was any activity before or after that in that house or in that place. I'd be curious to know about that. It's one of those things you don't really get to find out unless they write it down. So, But um, if it's a one-time thing, I always wonder about that. If it's just some energy field or some spirit or spirits passing through and either intentionally or not making things move or giving off feelings and giving off a sense of a presence to people that as the, that are in those places as they pass through. Um, I've told the story before, but I just um, just for an example, I had a when I first moved into this apartment not long after, there was one evening where I was sitting at my computer and uh, older computer at the time, and um, just playing solitaire and I started hearing voices coming from the front of the front of the apartment. I was in the back, and um, it sounded like an older man and older woman just having a, a pleasant conversation. And but then the sound started coming from inside my apartment, inside the front room, and um, and they kept on coming through. I, I tracked them uh, just by listening. But there was nothing there visually, and there were no sounds of them uh, walking on the carpet, or and this is a super thin carpet, so. Uh, but there was no sounds other than just them talking, and it was like they were just passing through, and had no idea that they were walking through someone's apartment. Uh, and then they just went out through the back, and just passed through the wall. The same way they had passed through the front wall to get in. And then they were gone. And of course they were heading. I've been, I said that several times tonight. Anyway. They were heading towards the this nursing home that is in back and to, the, to one side of my uh, apartment complex where I live. So it felt like they were heading over there. But they had no idea they had passed through a building uh, to get there. So I wonder if that happens sometimes. Maybe it's different, the things that happen or the, the side effects, you could say, or after effects are different for each kind of passing motion or or entity or whatever. And in the story that I just read, what, for whatever reason, the chair was what was uh, manipulated or, or affected. So just a thought, who knows, but a uh, neat story there. So, moving on to the next one. Let's see here. So, uh, there we go. Here it is. This one says, It was just after four in the morning when I heard someone pound on the front door with force, striking it five times. I was frightened and figured that, uh, let me see here, there we go. 
someone would come crashing through the door at any moment. As we live in the middle of nowhere and do not keep our doors locked. But as soon as the knocks uh, ended, all fell silent again. I got up and looked out of every window, but saw nothing. Not even footprints in the snow that covered the ground. I even checked our security camera system, which gives us a com complete view of everything around the house, but didn't find anything there either. I worked the night shift, so I was wide awake. My partner was asleep, though, until the knocks woke her up. It must have been a ghost or some other paranormal being, right? But how can such entities make so much noise? I don't know, so I try not to think about it too much. And that's where that story ends. And they bring up a good question, if it's... Somewhat something that or someone that is not does not have a physical body as we understand it um, Then how does that work how does Something that has no mass or weight Make sound and make a door it sounds like they made they made the door shake a little bit even um, and of course I have no answer for that and uh so, I'm just wondering what the reason was for that. If it was just to get attention, um, doesn't seem like anything else happened after that. So, hard to know. But uh, I'm glad that nothing else happened and that nothing tried to come in. Or um, I'm also glad that they didn't just open the doors because every once in a while you'll, you'll find a story that where someone does that. They open the door and then things start getting active so but um i'm glad they checked on the the just the windows and then the cameras first but um maybe that was even if that was some kind of a uh attempt to get in maybe the fact that they didn't open the door right away um sort of negated that attempt or it could have just been again just to try to get attention um and maybe not even their attention if it was some kind of a residual thing, residual energy field, a playback of things that happened before. Um, time anomalies, hard to say with that kind of a thing where it's just those knocking sounds and then nothing. So, but uh, moving on to the next story here. Let's see here. This next one, uh, let me see. Gotta scroll down a little ways. There we go. This one says, I am still in shock from this event, which happened tonight. I was in the middle of my drive home, which takes about two hours. I was coming out of the mountain, the mountains and heading into the desert. There are only two lanes to this highway at this point of my route, which I am very familiar with. Ahead of me, I noticed a pair of headlights approaching. They were moving fast, and I noticed that they were lower to the ground, in indicating a car of some kind, as opposed to the SUV I was driving. I saw the headlights pass me and watched them through my mirrors before returning my attention to the road ahead. It was a beautiful night with a full moon in the sky. Then I noticed that the headlights were not in my mirrors anymore. They had just vanished. But at this point, on the road, there are no turnoffs of any kind, meaning nowhere for the car to go. Looking forward again, I saw a huge cross on the side of the road. It was covered in white lights that made it easy to spot. Except nothing like that had been there before. I was sure of this. As I drive this route all the time during the day. I was left speechless by the event. I did a search online after this. And found out that phantom cars have been reported by others before. 
One comment I read suggested that I look into the news in that area excuse me, to see what else happened there. I found two articles about an elderly man who had died in an accident on that same road. Turns out that he lived in the same small town I do. I don't know if it was him that I saw or what he was trying to tell me. If it was, all I know is what I saw. A car that passed me and then disappeared. So that's the end of that story. And the writer is correct. There are, you could probably, I could probably do a whole show on that. Or maybe even many shows on sort of that vanishing vehicle kind of sighting where people see, sometimes it's just lights, other times it's the entire vehicle. And um, they'll see it and then they'll be watching it and then it'll just be gone. And um, I can't imagine, I've never, I've never seen that before, had that experience, but... Um, and you do hear that's uh, that kind of a thing associated with places where accidents are common, unfortunately. So that make, does make you wonder. Of course, it, it is also something of a, not a good, but a horror story trope or a, a scary story trope where this place is haunted because of all these accidents here and um, because of the people that died there. And not to say that that can't happen, but also... It's hard to know for sure um, how much of those kind of stories are legends and how much are based on actual sightings of things in these places. So there's a lot of, uh, let's say, blurring of the lines on websites. You have to really be careful and see if, it, if they're, the person writing is saying anything about it or um, being a made-up story or the legend they heard or any of a number of things like that. So, um, but yeah, so they could have seen something. It does sound like they saw something. I wonder how long it had been in between, um, the trip that they were on that night, the, the, the drive that night, and then the last time they'd been down that road. If it had been days, it could have been that the cross was put up on the side of the road, um, just in a normal fashion by, by someone that knew the, the guy that had passed. Um, but if it was just like the same day or day before, and but this man passed away a while ago, makes makes me wonder if there was some kind of a... Um, if it was some kind of an image? But I kind of doubt that. But it's not impossible either, so... But I think we have time for at least one more story here. Let's see. Let's get to the next one. This one says, This happened when I was around 10 or 11 years old. I was at home with the dog, the family dog. He was very verbal most of the time, but on this day, I noticed that he was quiet and he kept staring at the front door. Wondering what was wrong, I went to the door and looked outside through the glass. Standing there was a little girl about my age. She had long hair and green eyes, but other than that, we looked a lot, uh, very much alike. So I opened the door, and in that short time, the girl had vanished. Thinking I had imagined the whole thing, I closed the door. I turned around and then froze in fright as I saw the girl crouching behind the couch. Despite my fear, I walked towards her, and then watched as she vanished. When my parents got home, I told them what had happened. My stepdad said it, that it must have been my imagination. My mom, however, looked terrified. I asked her what was wrong, but she wouldn't say anything, and she never did. So that's the end of that story. Um, I wonder about that girl, if, if they looked a lot alike, then was it some family member that had passed 
in the tragic circumstances, the little girl, um, or something different, or just just was the mother just terrified because she believed, or at least at that point maybe started to believe in the paranormal, in that um, she believed her her child's uh, t- retelling of the, their experience, the writer's experience. Um, it also doesn't really say, but there are a lot of, there are some, some, some religions where they don't, they uh, have very specific beliefs about the paranormal and what can and can't exist. So I could see that also playing a part in that. Maybe it just didn't made no sense to the, the mother at all. And so that was maybe what terrified her even more than the actual little girl that had been seen appearing and vanishing. So, I wonder what, um, what, if anything else, happened uh, in that house after. If there was nothing else, um, then that's, in a way, that's odd, but also good. But, um, the way that the apparition and the writer seem to look similar is also odd so a lot of possibilities there a lot of questions of course and uh, let me check on the next story and if it's not too long then i might be able to get through it so let's see here um all right i think i can do it uh this next one says this happened when i was 17. i had just moved into a house where the previous owner had passed the winter before. One night I woke up feeling like I was being watched. When I sat up and looked around, I noticed that all the other bedroom doors near my room were closed. Then I spotted it. It was a figure darker than the darkness around it. And it had tiny silver lights for eyes. I asked, what do you want? It didn't answer, and a staring contest ensued. It felt like it went on forever, but then the figure just vanished. I have never seen anything like it before or since. So that's the end of that one. I like that the writer, in a way, there that, that was pretty brave, I would say. But also, I don't blame them to be asking um, what the, what this apparition, or the shadow figure, wanted. I think that's pretty neat. And um, maybe the, the shadow figure didn't have an answer, didn't know how to answer, couldn't answer, hard to say. But a lot of uh, questions there, of course. And uh, I'm glad that nothing else happened. Maybe the, the fact that the writer actually sort of um, confronted it maybe that made it go away or stay away hard to say there but uh, that's going to do it for today thank you all for being here and listening I'll be back tomorrow at the usual time 8pm eastern 5pm pacific to cover paranormal news on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal take care everyone